Um, good morning, uh, and colleagues. I'm uh, going to invite you to our last section. It is a hybrid section in uh, our story and uh, line two. And uh, uh, the name of section artificial intelligence and uh, its application. And uh, I'm cha chairman Alexander Nemec. The first record will be uh, Yolanda Barashova, uh, time series forecasting, building, uh, building, building of the system, please. Exactly why I 
I want to uh, forecast a discussion to you. So, um, let's uh, discuss more, uh, more the uh, algorithms that I use. Uh, first of all, um, uh, my, uh, um, let's discuss a few issues. Varian boosting is a uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, is an uh, ensemble learning uh, method uh, that uh, combines uh, multiple weak predictors, typically uh, decision trees, to create a, a strong predictive model, uh, and uh, uh, it works uh, by iteratively fitting uh, new models to the residuals of the previous models. Uh, Mobile the oral prediction error, and um, uh, so um, uh, here you can see the formulas. Uh, the first formula represents um, the predicted values for the actual model. Um, they are just the sum of the predicted values for the sample for each tree, and. Um, uh, the second formula is the objective function of uh, each boost. For each boost, uh, the objection function consists of two parts. Uh, the first part is the loss function, um, and the uh, second part is the regularization term. Uh, and the regularization term consists of two parts. And the first part, uh, um, the first part is uh, um, is used. Control complexity of the trees. Um, and the second term is used to uh, control the wave fraction of the belief terms and lowest algorithm. The lowest algorithm uses a slightly new approach uh, to, uh, to a subset of the data points, um, and the size of the limit determines uh, uh, the smoothing of our um, level of smoothing. Um, so uh, a larger window size leads to uh, more smoother uh, leads to smoother curve, and uh, smaller window size captures more of uh, local variations. So uh, once the uh, uh, lowest algorithm has estimated the trend component, it can be used also for uh, forecast future values of the trend component. Uh, so. Um, the algorithm extrapolates the trend component, uh, component beyond uh, the observed data points to obtain future trend estimates. Uh, and then, um, after I uh, forecasted the trend component, I can uh, I can use it to subtract it from the original point series uh, and to change my super um on the remainder component to test it separately. So, uh, how, uh, so uh, I could have used any other uh, algorithm for um, for trend uh, prediction. Uh, for example, for example, I could have used linear regression, linear regression, or um, or or IMAS, IMAS, and uh, all the other uh, data of the art models uh, that are probably used for time series. Forecasting uh, problem. Um, but the main point of my project is that I use the XDS algorithm to predict the remainder point of my time series. Um, so uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to train my XDS algorithm, uh, first of all, I did some uh, feature engineering. Um, uh, so I used uh, left values. Uh, and moving averages so for um, five or fifteen minutes, thirty minutes, one hour, three hours, um, and so on. Um, and uh, also, I um, added to a feature of how such as data as um, uh, daytime features, such as the week, month, hour, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, because it, it can greatly enhance the performance of each of those algorithm. Um, so, um, so this uh, inclusion uh, improves the model's performance. Uh, and then I also change the 
in terms of the extremist aggressor, um, it, has, it also plays a crucial role in the performance of the um, of the extremist aggressor. Um, and I, uh, for the sake of continuing uh, the hyperparameters, I'm using a master CD, a method from a secondary monitor. So um, finally, uh, when the extremist aggressor model um, is uh, <laughs> when the when the uh, uh, characters are uh, tuned um, and uh, uh, it's to be trained um, using the best type of parameters, uh, uh, it means that we can. Um, we can forecast our remainder component, and here you can see uh, the final uh, forecast of the trend component made by a low less uh, algorithm. Um, so, as you can see, it is a really smooth curve. Um, uh, um, so, next slide is uh, uh, that is uh, the final results of this video or the remainder component of the one kind of time series. Um, uh, and the uh, next slide uh, is um, this uh, error distribution graph uh, you can see here and uh, it is normally distributed and uh, I also uh, edit uh, name for each of the implementations of dictionaries on this slide uh, to compare uh, to compare these errors. Uh, so, um, uh, so uh, an eighth implementation of each of for time series forecasting uh, would involve uh, directly feeding the row, uh, not uh, decomposed based to the issues compressor. Uh, I also did the hyperparameter tuning and I also made feature engineering for a new implementation, but um, as you can see, it, uh, it didn't work uh, uh, as, uh, this, uh, as good as, uh, um, as uh, uh, my improved model. Uh, because uh, if supposed to be a is uh, a powerful uh, algorithm, but it can, uh, it, it, it cannot, uh, uh, it cannot effectively capture long-term uh, trends, uh, and system analysis patterns, um, without excessively separating them. Uh, so by decomposing the time series into the trend and the remainder component, we can provide more focused and accurate inputs to the issue component, and leading to improved forecasting performance. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you all for the yes. presentation. Yes. yes. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for your efforts. Uh, maybe uh, any questions? No questions? Well, uh, thank you for your efforts. Okay, and next report uh, will be uh, Alexander Stravoitov uh, and uh, Viktor Kuznaproshin, uh, technology make it, making real time decision based on narrow network forecasting. Uh, Alexander, you can start. Please uh, share your presentation and start. Видно, видно презентацию. Да, без старт. Окей. Александр, тут у вас, наверное, два экрана. То есть вы показываете текущую презентацию. На весь экран. Сейчас видно, да? Да, yes. 
It's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, hello, dear colleges, conference participant. I'm Alexander Starovoitov. I'm postgraduate student of Belarusian State University. Uh, the topic of my presentation is uh, technology for making real-time decisions based on neural network forecasting. Uh, so today I will talk about the purpose of this research, the problem, the approach we proposed, the methods we used, um, the critical IT service and its model, uh, the combined proactive management system for this service, the data we use, the natural network models we built, and the results that we obtained. Uh, the purpose of this research uh, was development of technology for making real-time decision uh, based on neural network forecasting for management of scaling of critical IT services. And the development of combined proactive system for managing the service, which scale uh, the service dependent on external loads. Let's talk about uh, the problem. Uh, supporting critical IT service and systems such as banking, telecommunication, and industrial system, say an operational state with guaranteed computational resources level is a relevant problem of uh, in to the total digital society. Uncertainty in external loads and failures of computing equipment lead to failures in operation and performance degradation of critical IT systems. As a result, uh, the loss of operational efficiency in processing information and conducting banking card operation can have serious consequences, including financial losses and major incidents. Uh, let's talk about the uh, uh, problem of existing approach. Uh, several authors have uh, developed various critical IT service management systems using neural network model to effective decision making. However, in this system, only one neural network model is trained for a specific type of external loads. Uh, and uh, different critical systems have entirely different load profiles. And the uh, model trained on data from one system may not be suitable for another. Also, such models based on large data sets of historical data may lose forecasting quality and require initial preparation of a training data set covering a long observation period. At the same time, uh, the complex neural network models are used, uh, for example, uh, used for STEM layers uh, with memory and other that require extended training times on high performance resources for the given data sets, for example, GPU or TPU or something like that. And in addition, uh, the load uncertainty uh, so sharp peaks over a short period of time is uh, too difficult to forecast. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, a key important aspect of operational decision making. To ensure effective decision making operational management, it's essential to focus on adequacy of forecasting the system's key parameters. And it's important the speed of preparing the forecast and forecasting the horizon into the future. Now, uh, <clears throat> let's talk about our approach. Our approach is based on the idea that uh, the management system, management IT system can exist in various state, states in terms of computational resource capacity. And for each state during its lifetime, a neural network model can be created and trained to describe the behavior within that state. This model enables a set of predictions to be made based on which the system transition to a new state. This process then repeats for the next state and so on. And uh, what happened uh, with the system over the extended period of time is not important in the ability of, to make accurate forecasts based on a small amount of real-time accumulating data. Model training on this data and subsequent prediction should be carried out rapidly in parallel with accumulating new data. And uh, also local time segments for different states may, may have varying numbers of data samples. And um, for this approach, uh, let's talk about uh, our forecasting challenge and our methods. Forecasting within the local time window leads to following challenge. Uh, let's consider critical systems that can be 
in a finite state of states Sn determined by external loads on the system and transition levels. In each state E, the system generates a discrete signal in form of uh, short time series X, XT or set of time series. The task is to build a predictor uh, based on neural network network using a portion of this signal denote as XT with wave, uh, which forecasts the system transition to a new state as I plus one. Uh, to solve this problem uh, was developed a method of dynamic local approximation by neural network models, DLN, uh, the essence of which is that during the operation of the system for each of its state, a simple uh, neural network model are built and on a part of the local time segment data. And we assume that the model trained on portion of this data will adequately make forecast for the entire local segment. Let's talk about our model system for critical servers. Due to difficulty of development of relevant systems in laboratory conditions or without direct interaction with actual critical infrastructure, a model system was developed for researching the discussed issue. This model system conceptually corresponds to critical information service model. The system consists of a set of computational models where instance of application software operate and external requests are load balanced, balanced between them. A stress system is used to generate requests allowing for configuration of load and retrieval of statistics of processed result requests and response times. The model system supports scaling mechanism uh, for system change state. And uh, let's briefly de describe the main components of the system, model system. Uh, after consider considering various options uh, like uh, virtual machines, Kubernetes clusters, Docker Compose, it was decided to use a Docker Compose for computational models in this model system. This decision allows for creation of computational models as Docker container their management and collection of various utilization metrics. Load balancing cross containers with a web application is accomplished using Docker Compose built-in service name feature. The configuration of service and resource can be described in YAML format, so we use um, infrastructure as code approach. Application web services are based on popular high performance, minimalistic, stable web framework, a collab stack written on high-level language programming language, uh, high-level uh, Golang programming language. And Lacoste was chosen as load generator. It's easy to configure, allows to create load profile descriptions for the model system from Python classes. Let's talk about the combined management system for managing this service. The system architecture consists of five main models, uh, which are depicted in figure. The monitoring models, uh, is, model is responsible for uh, collecting performance metrics of computation models of the system and adding new metrics when the system state changes. The state change model is responsible for sending control commands, which uh, change the state of the system and monitoring the correctness of state changes. The dispatch and decision making model, the training model, create training model or learning model, as denoted in figure. Uh, train will create a neural network model for a set of historical data for state of the management system. And uh, forecasting model or prediction model provide forecast for resource utilization parameters with a specific horizon in the future for the current state of management system. Uh, the dispatch decision model is central. It, along with the other models, implemented high, high level language in Python. More details about the operation I will tell on slide with algorithm description. Now let's talk about operation principle of our management management system. Um, the management of critical IT service resources handled by agent that receive real time data real time data on the utilization of computational models and make decision about scaling the management system. The agent uses combination of reactive and proactive control. Uh, for each state of management system, a separate data set is automatically generated. A neural network model is trained based on this data set and predictions of resource utilization parameters are made. The agent compares the current, current data 
on average load across computation models with a prediction result for a specific state of system and to make decision about changing the state, upscaling or downscaling on our action. If a pick and load appears and the neural network model is not ready yet, or there is no prediction for the average utilization of models or prediction doesn't give such behavior, then the reactive components activated. If the forecast of average parameter exceeds the threshold values, uh, then proactive uh, decision is made in advance uh, to change the system state. Uh, so proactive component is used. Let's talk about the main initialization parameters. Uh, during initialization resource utilization threshold, the system SLA are set, a reaching of which leads to change in state of management system. Threshold for resource addition denotes as A and removal denotes as D as it separately. System stabilization parameter call period is uh, defined, uh, which determines the number of cycles during which no state change in action is performed in the system. The parameter that specifies the number of iterations for accumulating data for one state to create a model, denoted as M, is set, and the look ahead parameters, denoted as Z, is also defined, indicating the number for cast point into the future. A metric are collected in parallel using Jobly library with data being collected in frequency approximately one time per two seconds. Uh, let's talk about uh, algorithm section. The system workload algorithm is presented in form of diagram on slide. Uh, the following action are performed in loop. Uh, first, uh, we obtain the current list of models for the state. Next, we obtain the utilization metric of the computation models in parallel mod. We calculate the average process of utilization across computation models in order there, and save the state metrics in a dictionary in memory. We check if we have collected enough samples to be the model. If yes, we send the data for model building and training along with the state code to a neighboring process. We check if the, if the model is ready. If model is not ready, we, is ready, we obtain the model code and send the current data for forecasting to another neighboring process. We check if the process is ready. If the forecast is not ready, on the reactive component is used for the control action. If the forecast is ready, the maximum of Forecast window is calculated and compared with maximum of current value and forecast value as a corresponding threshold. If the SLA requirements are related, the control decision is made and comes sent to change the system state. Then process repeats. Let's talk about uh, non-block interaction between, between processes. In this process mechanism, non-block interaction without a process implemented which run parallel to main process and responsible for creating and training neural networks and for customer socialization parameters for a specific state with a specified horizon in the future. This mechanism is implemented using multi-processing library and the process communication uses a multi-processing query mechanism, which form CIFO or first input, first output queries. Um, uh, there are uh, three queries, uh, model list query, model state query, model result query used for communication between the main process and uh, process responsible for creating and training neural network models. And another three queries, predict file query, predict the list query, predict result query used for communication with prediction process. Uh, let's talk about initial data for creating model for state. We use a short time series uh, short time series of uh, six, uh, 64 data points is used uh, with a time interval of two seconds between samples. Uh, the processing of original series with scaling into one, uh, zero one interval is not performed uh, because uh, it introduces additional errors as a raw data and leads to additional overhead for scaling before and after training. The original series divided into sets, so the training set 70% and the test set 30%. Let's talk about briefly about uh, network parameters. The following parameter are used to build a train model. Time window of uh, 40 elements was selected empirically in the vector. Two layer network, uh, network is used with one hidden layer and one output layer. One neuron is output layer serves the accumulator. Training is performed for uh, 100 epochs with a batch size of one. Um, uh, the number of uh, neurons in the hidden layers is 90. Uh, 
three times uh, larger than the time window. The fully connected linear layer is used as activation function is rule. Drop out is employed for regularization. We use the loss function is used in mean square error. Optimization method is Adam. For these parameters, the time of model training is, approximate, uh, is approximately uh, two seconds. The time of predict is much less than one second. Let's talk about uh, uh, let's talk about system operation under workload. As an example, system performance is traded under gradually increasing load, reaching up to 600 users performing varying requests over approximately half an hour. As a result, in running the system, it changes its state six times, with preactive change occurring four times and reactive stage occurring two times. Mm. Uh, also, uh, 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 we can see uh, some graph. Um, example slide pre present prediction of utilization computing modules for two states, green colors initial data, blue colors forecast, and here on in trading validation. Uh, also interesting um, also interesting uh, to look at situation for state s1 we can see a reactive change of state uh, peak at near 112 sample uh, network model lost uh, in this situation the parallel process uh, the model in parallel process the model trained and the last forecast was made but before that the command to change the state will already be sent this situation showed to us that complicity of process has increased as the number of users create, create increase and the model does not take into account this change in the complicity of process because training took place on data for slightly fewer, fewer users. Uh, let's talk about a uh, model library. In process described, described above, various network uh, neural, neural models are created each uh, associated with a specific state uh, determined by a number of computational models. Each model memorizes the characteristic of a particular system state. The set of models uh, can be saved and accumulated as library of neural models. There can be multiple models for each state. For each model, training quality metrics, validation error, or signal complicity assessment uh, can be saved. The library of model can be used for predictions for before training a new model in various scenarios. For example, to choose the best model for the state, to create an ensemble from a set of models that correspond to one state, um, to create an ensemble from um, a set of uh, models for that corresponds for different states. All of these options can can be used uh, during training of new models as additional predictor when the model for current signal is not, re not yet ready. Uh, over time, the model library will continue to grow. It's possible to implement a mechanism for forgetting models, where um, for a specific state, only a certain number of models with the lowest validation errors are retained. Uh, Let's talk about our conclusion. As a result of this conduct, uh, conducted research, a model system for critical series are combined um, and combined management system were developed. And the original approach to solving the forecast problem for decision making is proposed, which enha enhance the adaptive properties and stability of the management system to external loads. Within this approach, a new method of dynamic local approximation using neural network models plan was developed. This approach, uh, this approach allows for creation of library of network neural models capable of making prediction for system states. Furthermore, this, uh, using this technology in the future opens up the possibility of implementing adaptation mechanism in the system conceptually similar to those found in the natural world. In context of discussed pro pro process, each neural network model can be compared compare to the set of DNA, encoding the characteristic of specific state corresponding to external influence. Mutation with natural selection can be seen as survival of those models so that uh, make better predictions of changes in resource utilization parameters. Uh, so they lead to the best adaptation to a specific external influence. 
crossover can be likened to the mechanism of staking the best models. This analogy draws parallel between the evolution process in biology and the development of adaptive neural networks model. Uh, so that's all. Thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, your effort. Uh, by the way, I propose uh, next notification when uh, time is finished, uh, start to uh, show smile. If uh, time finishes fully, I uh, show your hand. And now I hope I'm orientated back by it. But now we have, uh, maybe if you have a question. Anybody have a question? Okay, if no question, I have a question. It's uh, on slide uh, combined, uh, combined product managers system. There are a uh, special blog about monitoring, uh, monitoring model. Uh, I'd like to understand what this means, what this means monitoring in uh, this system, what parameter here, what parameters is uh, try monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, we we can monitor uh, any parameters of uh, Docker container. We uh, use uh, uh, Docker demo, which uh, give us uh, average statistics of uh, specified parameters. And we, in parallel uh, case, uh, uh, give uh, any parameter can uh, can give any parameters of uh, any container. Simultaneously. Okay. And use uh, only CPU authorization parameter. It's, uh, so, so called parameters. Okay, well. Uh, maybe if you have any questions, any questions? Maybe we have online questions? Okay. Uh, thank you, Alexander. Thank you. And we uh, now we're going to the our next uh, report for Nina Litovsky, Denis Tarnatsky, Trahini Bonsky, speaking like uh, sitting, uh, speaking, mayor of Mod, mayor and model for Android systems. Okay, you can start. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Again, I'm a student of uh, Russian State University, Faculty of Biology and Technologies. It related to uh, the end of uh, this work, this uh, a hardware implementation of uh, we have Spark and Neon. Next slide, please. We divide our work in three parts. The first introduction, model implementation of the system, and where we can apply uh, this model. Next. Okay. Situation uh, software part. Uh, about implementation and uh, where it is using. Uh, it's using. Uh, Neural models are is using uh, in the embedded system, for example, uh, smart house for disabled patients uh, and uh, drones. But uh, why SNN? Why spiking neurons? Because it repeats uh, the model of uh, brain uh, that we have. It's uh, Using now in robotics and uh, other directions. Uh, keywords of this uh, work is repeated system, the co-controls, uh, 
and speed for hundred thirty uh, spiking neon spike scouting it will be less uh, maybe uh, cloud introduction I'm sure you know the history of uh, neuro networks at all but I'd like to pay your attention that the first uh, versions of uh, such models was uh, have had uh, hardware implementations that is simple since 1943 or until 1960. Uh, and with the first of the plan, uh, since uh, 1985, it was a soft realization, and uh, the last, the last uh, generations are again hard. Uh, can you? Yes. Uh, it's uh, spiking in them. Uh, there is uh, difficult types of devices. It's, it's, uh, can be realized. Uh, it's a PGA or Intel or a long field. It's uh, for the problem of devices uh, for these agents. Okay. okay. Uh, yes. uh, it's a uh, comparison table uh, between. Uh, our VNNs, biological neural networks, ANNs, classical models, and spiking neurons. Spiking neurons. Uh, for hardware implementation, SNNs is uh, in priority because uh, we uh, work with spikes, uh, so some signals, continuous, and that's uh, in traditional work, it's scouts. Uh, training. We know for NNS, but for SNS is under is under discussion because it's very hard uh, to implement uh, how it uh, for our model that we propose it will be later. Okay. Uh, about uh, implementation in the system. So some books about. This a picture that is a uh, representation of such model as uh, integrated fire, uh, theoretical model, and physical operation you see here. It's a uh, repeat. Uh, the model of our brain. Uh, the simplest model is the Jacobian model. Uh, the, this is different types of uh, works. This model, uh, he is considered. Uh, he is uh, a spectator of uh, spiking neurons. Uh, it represents itself the system of differential equation. Second order. Uh, where you see here x uh, neon state space vector, uh, the decay constant, and uh, uh, neons is another frequency, the input signal. Uh, it's a simple model, of course, it is not high. Uh, we have uh, our, an hour, but uh, this FPO. Uh, Forty point operations is different, uh, and uh, we like to uh, implement uh, more simple because uh, we need power consumption for this uh, uh, device. Okay. We propose such model as spike counting model. Basic principle of this model is uh, cancel the two passes within the time window. A time window depends on sinus weight, 
output will be in from this process of Boolean. Uh, one equals true if and the and demo equals false, otherwise, I don't need to look. You can see in this reference. Because it's healthy and we like to uh, load to the this device, just MCU or logic elements you see next minutes. I'm sorry, uh, it's all recommended, it's modeling. Uh, this we, we have some input signal for example. Uh, voice signal, uh, we have state space, uh, it's a uh, linear printer, a uh, Schmidt trigger, and uh, logical operator and for uh, uh, managing uh, timer, and uh, it's manage. Dynamic of uh, synapse. So uh, it's uh, becoming signal to the counter, and then uh, it uh, compare with uh, and web uh, our theoretical uh, value. Next. So we say we want to minimize. Minimize power consumption, minimizing FDR. Uh, and there is uh, different platforms for it, for example, on that data. But uh, we like uh, we like any speed with signal processor because uh, it is for things where it uh, is needed. Uh, well, ultra power consumption. The hardware, what is the launch part? And for this, uh, this is good uh, RPM months. So, where power consumption is, uh, we use it uh, at minimum, minimized. Uh, the voltage is only until uh, one and eight volts. Uh, okay, this whole chart I will uh, say about later. Uh, so when we uh, have a uh, stage of testing, we use it this model when we have some signal processing unit, digital scope, that is a similar scope for detecting it, and uh, uh, UCU, yeah. and uh, PC will be represent information, and uh, let uh, 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 say about activation system. If we Uh, of course, the uh, comparison table of uh, energy consumption, different devices, uh, series MSP is here, uh, there is uh, Admega, STM, and the was uh, uh, Timers on board uh, has uh, important uh, value because I see, I say about later, uh, max speed. So energy consumption, and the speed is little. Next question. About applications. Uh, we uh, can use uh, this model if we're uh, fast. Year trans transform uh, for a device where is need uh, ultra low power consumption. So for detecting and 
recognizing the voice is uh, this scan, hardware scan, uh, structure scan. Uh, when we have some order, amplifier, trigger, and, and T. But uh, here we have a counter, uh, two counters, and uh, uh, we can switch uh, by buttons and uh, anywhere we can uh, change. Uh, negative uh, calibration. Uh, why it is needed? I'd like to say in next slide. Please next slide. Uh, we have different types of signals. Uh, any person have uh, uh, found uh, its speech and the term or other parameters this uh, can be difficult. And uh, we need calibration the device. Uh, I'll go into uh, it next. This is an example for such signals. Uh, now, three, we can see that it's very different. And, uh, okay, next slide. Uh, this small part of algorithm. Um, this was. We did it uh, a code composer studio uh, for this. Uh, yes. And this part of group chart. Okay, next. Conclusion, uh, the implementation of spices counting model uh, same in the user speed of 430 uh, is achieved without the need of for 14 point operations in real time. The energy consumption of design is the same uh, in speed 40, 30G, uh, 25, uh, 53. Uh, it applies less in comparison to the model based on Atmega uh, 3 countries, uh, 28. Any questions? <laughs> yes, Thank you for the reference. Maybe you have some questions. Any questions? Thank you, Studio, for the uh, questions. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, please, wait a uh, I have a question. Uh, um, thank you for the purpose because uh, we are speaking uh, with a uh, very interesting conception because uh, today is there are uh, many ways for programming neural network data, but speaking later uh, with uh, conception of most ability that how to define uh, our uh, models, etc. But uh, I don't understand what is the uh, what connection of this conception with uh, deep neural networks. Maybe I don't understand deep something. Deep neural networks is continuation. We have six and only spike neural networks. But uh, also it tells about uh, dynamic signals. What, uh, what, what is the conception of dynamic signals? I would like to pass to the microphone. Oh, поскольку я значит уже здесь я хотел бы пояснить почему здесь важна значит энергетическая эффективность дело в том что Всегда желательно иметь больше нейронов, больше связей, но все упирается значит, в энергопотребление. В один чип можно упаковать определенное количество. Больше, значит, начинает греться. Это вот первое, первое степень. Второе степень, что сейчас нейронные сети все чаще применяются на борту, то ли это какой-то там беспилотный автомобиль, то ли там дрон. И здесь ресурс энергии еще более важен. И вот в этом отношении 
Сейчас работа ведется по спайковым нейронным сетям, но их рассматривают как нейронные сети третьего поколения. Ну и еще, почему это важно, что практически до настоящего времени работа в нейронных сетях традиционных использовалась классическая модель, которая в 43 году макала кумедиться. Формальный нейрон надан, и все, что потом было сделано за много лет, это акционационные функции. То есть там появилась сигмоидальная, гиперальский тангенс, Значит, в глубоких сетях это, значит, релу, сутичкой, вот. Но все равно это скалярная информация, и она дальше идет. Здесь же, в белом, вот там, Ижикевича модель, она э, спайковая. И почему к ней пришел интерес, при э, том, что она относительно простая, она в многие ситуации рассматривает. Значит, ну и еще вот, э, хотел бы задать внимание, что мы еще не дошли до... Э, нейронных сетей, то есть мы использовали нейронный, этот нейрон как кодировщик информации. И это еще важно с точки зрения иллюстрации в учебном процессе, что многообразие нейронов значительно шире, нежели того, что вот использовалось раньше и то, что заложено там в центр Flow или в Керос, там или в Айдерс. Спасибо. Спасибо большое. Okay, and uh, we continue our session. And next uh, reference is uh, online. Uh, Oleg Majdovich, uh, Survo Analysis uh, in Credit Coding. Oleg, uh, please uh, share your presentation. Uh, Hello. Can you hear me? You can start. Oh, you can start. So, okay, if you can hear me, I will start. So, uh, good morning, everyone, uh, dear colleagues, uh, students and teachers. Uh, my name is Alek Naidovic, and today I'd like to talk about uh, survival analysis and credit scoring. So we will uh, dive into the bank sphere where credit risk assessment is vital part and understand what is uh, PD models and how it can be replaced with survival analysis. Uh, in addition to that, we will talk about useful math and uh, survival analysis, censoring, data sets and metrics in order to evaluate uh, and validate our models. So um, let's talk about credit risk. Uh, credit risk assessment is vital in the financial sector, helping determine the likelihood of borrowers failing to meet their loans obligations. And traditional credit scoring models, uh, such as uh, logistic regression and decision trees, have been the standard for predicting the probability of default, PD. Uh, however, uh, these models encounter difficulties uh, when handling uh, sensory data, a common issue due to a large number of borrowers who successfully repay their loans. So, in addition to that, uh, quantitative uh, assessment of the PD value is one of the most common uh, components of credit risk, as you can see on the slide. The amount of expected losses calculated using this formula, and it's strongly uh, affected by PD built of default. So that's why it's uh, vital for us to predict uh, this uh, value normally uh, and efficiently. So um, basic steps of uh, PDE development. Um, so there are four main steps. Uh, so the first one is data collection and preparation. Uh, this phase uh, involves gathering and preparing data Uh, related uh, to the characteristics and parameters of credit uh, requests and calculating actual default values. As a main part of PD creation pipeline, it consists of uh, two main parts, uh, univariate and multivariate analysis. And the main process that takes place into these uh, two parts are related to the transformation of feature through weight of evidence or void transformation and the removal of the features that to solve uh, the multi problem. <clears throat> the next step is model development. Uh, models are created to describe the relationship between actual defaults, values, and risk factors and features. Um, so the model is built in such a way that at, at the output, we can easily interpret each factor and how much it influence on formation uh, of this core. Uh, each factor uh, can be distributed uh, based on score map, uh, which is um, distributed uh, between 0 and 1,000. So every manager, sales manager, and analytic uh, can easily understand what is going on with this or that client or business. 
So the first step is model calibration. Uh, the developed models are calibrated using current data to ensure their accuracy. So calibration is an integral part of creating the PD model since in the world of finance, there are different business uh, cycles such as growth, crisis, or stagnation. We have to uh, calibrate our model for each of these um, fi um, financial um, uh, things. So <laughs> next step is uh, application and uh, monitoring. Uh, since uh, the bank of assessing default uh, is the most important task in the bank, then validation, accuracy assessment, and constant updating uh, PD models is an essential part of the entire development and implementation cycle. So that's why uh, models have to be uh, validated on the data and on a monthly basis. Uh, this allows to revelate the default probability values on the uh, based on up-to-date risk factors, information, and calibrations. So uh, let's talk about classic approaches. And uh, the main classic approach for evaluating PD is uh, log logistic regression. So this approach involves classifying past uh, customers into positive or negative categories based on their repayment history within a specified frame time frame. So you can see the formula on this. So um, in addition to that, it's easy to interpret uh, this model for the bank needs since we have to know why I classify this or that person as a default person and etc. And that's why we scale our factors uh, to the range of zero to 1000 and uh, the sum of all these factors should be lower than 1000. So as I said above, it really helps to understand why this or that person has a default uh, score. On the other hand, uh, logistic regression restricts PD estimation to a fixed one-year time frame, leading to a hard data uh, preparation process. So that's why survival analysis can help to solve this problem. And uh, this um, survival analysis provides the crucial advantage of assessing default risk across uh, various future time frames, thus let's increase its risk assessment. So. Uh, let's talk about it. Uh, so survival analysis is a statistical technique uh, which is widely used in the fields of like medicine and engineering, engineering and it will, has found its way into credit uh, risk assessment and scoring. So this approach focused on modeling, event timing, and it's particularly well suited for analyzing credit risk. Strange uh, lies uh, in its ability to handle sensory data, which is common in credit risk assessment due to borrowers not defaulting within the study period. So let's talk about the math about uh, and the survival analysis. So first of all, we have the distribution function. Uh, let's view T as the time it takes for a facility to encounter a default event. The distribution function uh, quantifies the likelihood that the time to the event t is less than or equal uh, to a specific time t. Uh, so next uh, one is survival, another, uh, survival function. So this function can be obtained to represent the probability that the time to event uh, t uh, exceeds to a specific time uh, t lower. Uh, so uh, there are two another functions, which is uh, most important for uh, creating uh, models based on survival analysis is uh, density function and hazard function. So density function is uh, uh, calculates the probability that the feature time matches the time t, uh, considering all potential times. And the hazard function uh, quantifies the probability that its uh, facility remains operational until time t and uh, we'll have the event on the immediate uh, subsequent moment. So it's uh, clear enough and we can move forward with this. Um, oops. Um, um, uh, I'd like to show you sensor. Uh, I'd like to tell you about sensor. So uh, survival analysis deals with common issue called sensor data, which means uh, some important information like uh, end dates is missing and the perfect data set would have both start and end dates for all portfolio facilities to calculate their lifetimes. 
but when the end date is missing, it's uh, considered as right sensor data. And when estimating the probability of default for one year using logistic regression, facilities must be operational for at least a year. So if we exclude uh, facilities leaving the portfolio without end dates, uh, the data set becomes much smaller, making it hard to estimate the survival function across the entire period. So it's crucial for the model to include all observations, uh, even those with missing end dates for the entire data period. So uh, there are three main uh, models based on survival analysis. It's non-parametric, fully parametric and semi-parametric models. So uh, the main model from non-parametric models is compliant Meyer methods, which does not require any weights or training things. Uh, it does require the data and based on it, it can uh, easily uh, draw a survival curve, uh, which represent the survival distribution function. And the key benefit of this estimator lies on the ability to consider sensory data. <clears throat> so the next one is fully parametric model. In case of survival function, a known the follow, uh, to follow or closely approximate a known distribution is better to use this kind of method. So parametric models are better suited for forecasting and win and will return smooth survival function. Uh, the most common of them are exponential, variable, log logistic, and log normal, as you can see on the slide. And the last one is a semi-parametric uh, model. Uh, and one of uh, the main model from this um, semi-parametrics uh, is a Cox proportional hazard model, as you can see on the slide. First and for the most, it sets itself apart uh, by not requiring any baseline assumption. And uh, as a semi-parametric model, it primarily focused on modeling a hazard function. And it does uh, so by assuming that it's time component and it's feature component. So as you can see, there is a linear component um, uh, in this formula, which means that we can be, it can be very easy to uh, explain uh, the prediction uh, for this um, type of model. So, and let's talk about metrics and validation. Uh, so I have used a data set, which is called the photo of client card clients data set. Uh, I took it from a Kaggle competition in order to create my um, um, predictions based on survival analysis and logistic regression. And as a metrics I use, uh, I use I've used a uh, rock oak metric and the power statistics. So in case of evaluating two or more scoring algorithms, these metrics uh, uh, serve as a, the benchmark. So it's very useful uh, for our purposes. So, and uh, as a result, I got uh, these kind of metrics. Uh, so I used uh, Cox proportional hazard function um, based on survival uh, analysis and have used logistic regression. And we can see that um, we have three periods, one year, two, and three year, years uh, period. And the, as we can see, um, Cox proportional hazard function uh, model um, returns better results based on these metrics. So, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be uh, I'll glad to uh, answer them. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your effort. Uh, you can pause Shalin. And uh, if uh, any of you have questions, you can uh, ask your questions. But on the line, have your questions. More questions. Okay, Alex, thank you for your effort. Um, um, but uh, next rep, we're going to in our session, and uh, the next rep is uh, Daniel uh, Zingalev and Vladimir Sarvanov.
improving uh, the efficiency of DFD uh, and DFD light algorithm for price graph. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. You, you can start. Yes, it's from the You can uh, start. Okay. Hello, dear colleagues. I represent Belarusian State University. My name is Daniel Tinhalo, and my research was devoted to improve efficiency of web free and web free life algorithms for large and sparse graphs. Uh, this algorithm is actually used for solving subgraph isomorphism problems. So, what is a problem statement for Z problems? Uh, we have uh, two graphs. The first graph is large data graph referred as G. A second graph is small pattern graph referred as H. And we need to find all isomorphic embeddings of a small pattern graph within a large graph. The problems have uh, several practical applications. For example, in chip design um, or in bioinformatics, when we need to find occurrences of, for example, some hazard molecule, molecular into a big molecular. Okay. Uh, the currently best algorithms for these problems are VF series algorithms. The first algorithm of VF series was developed in 1999. These algorithms use backtracking, and then um, in these algorithms, each pair of uh, pattern and data graph is being uh, placed into a partial matching between data graph and pattern, and then correctness of the matching is checked by different feasibility rules. In BF2 algorithms developed in 2004, new feasibility rules were introduced for labeled graph and in web 3 algorithms. Uh, new approach for determining ordering of uh, patterns and data graph vertices was also introduced. And web -free light, in web -free light algorithm, several feasibility rules were removed that improved speed, execution speed of the algorithms. Okay, so in this paper, we introduce how uh, we can improve these algorithms. The first idea is pattern decomposition. When we uh, split pattern into uh, several small patterns, we can execute algorithms for graph isomorphism independently. And then we can combine embeddings of uh, pattern parts into embeddings of entire pattern using a click find algorithms. So this idea leads to speed up achieved due to parallelization. Secondly, uh, in this paper, we will try to, to improve uh, effective ordering for pattern vertices. But what is the effective ordering? We need to discover such an ordering of pattern vertices, which might by permutation, it effectively reduces algorithm execution time. So for each different permutation, we can get uh, execution time determined by Z permutation because uh, algorithm execution times depends uh, largely on permutation in which pattern vertices are processed. And fact reduction means that program execution time with this order is, is significantly better than uh, average execution time with a random order. So what uh, approaches that are used in web free and web free light algorithms for solving this effective ordering problem. The following criteria I used. The next um, vertex of pattern to be processed is determined by the following criteria, by the number of edges of going from the vertex to from the current vertex to a vertex already ordered the number of vertices in the data graph that have same or greater degree and the same label as considered pattern vertex and the degree of vertex in the pattern graph. 
So in this research, we tried to improve these criteria in order to make algorithm work faster. What we have to do? Firstly, we need to collect a set of graphs on which we will get the weight vector. We should apply a vertex presentation to each pattern in the set, in the training set, which will be used for determining weight vector. Of course, uh, this representational algorithm should be the same for all graphs in the set. And then by using genetic algorithm, simulated annealing algorithm, or just random search, um, I use this algorithm to obtain the weight vector. And then how our vertices are ordered. So we order vertices of the pattern graph based on a steady scalar product of the weight vector multiplied to representation vector. We need to find how different features of representation vector uh, have uh, different importance. Okay, and uh, how to get features for the vertices? The first algorithm is not to back. Not to back algorithms uh, use the following idea. Firstly, we need to collect a set of random walks on the graph, and then by using skipgram architecture, we get um, representation vectors for vertices and um, vectors for nearby vertices have color product close to one and uh, distant vertices have color products of the vertex representation that are not close to one. Talk to back uses similar idea. Then we once again have random walks on multigraph. Multigraph that is achieved by copying original graph and then uh, the probability of transition is um, determined in the way that vertices that are structurally similar, so that have uh, degrees of neighboring vertices uh, similar. So that vertices have a probability to transition uh, higher. And the final algorithm that was used in this research is roll to back. It also uh, makes vertex presentation in the way that structurally similar vertices have vertex presentation that have scalar products close to one, but it has attributes random walks with uh, attributes placed as a number of motif graph occurrences in the neighboring set of each vertex of each vertex. Okay, so we get features for each vertex using one of these three algorithms and then use random search or simulated annealing in order to get uh, weights, to get importance of um, these features. We actually use these algorithms, not a gradient descent, because uh, time function is not differentiable. Okay. What about experiments? In our experiment, we utilize its attributed relational graph database. The database consists of wide spectrum of domains, including social networks, biological networks, transportation, and station networks. Uh, however, proposed algorithms, both um, with uh, parallelization and pattern split, and uh, with proposed effective ordering algorithms, effective ordering. Uh, significantly improve efficiently efficiency of web free and web free light algorithms only on graphs with uh, bounded degree. And it's also a good result. Uh, the plot of web free and web free lights is cushion speed up dependence of size of data graph for uh, algorithm with pattern decomposition. That is comparison of uh, two threaded algorithms comparing with one thread. And that is a plot for web free and web free light performance with effective vertex ordering.
Okay, so what is the main result? Modification of web frame of reliant algorithms were developed based on pattern decomposition, which enables effective parallelization of computation. A new algorithm for solving effective, not ordinary pro problem was developed, and new modification of web frame of reliant were proposed with this effective not ordering for pattern graphs. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Neil. Uh, 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 I, uh, I know maybe if anybody has any questions from uh, online or from study. No questions? Okay, but uh, uh, okay, I have questions and uh, we talked about uh, pattern analytics uh, evolution and um, uh, if uh, I can show some examples, but I think uh, uh, if we talk about pattern vertex, can we use any convolution techniques for comparison this pattern and something like this? Not on the graph. Because in your reference, I'm mean, listening about graphs. But I think that it's possible to use a uh, different conversion uh, properties for Okay, are you understand me? Um, I try. So oh. you mean that we can use another algorithms to get vertex representation based on convolutions, right? Yes, yes. Uh, that is, of course, a good proposal. Um, yes, it's possible to use different algorithms for generating not uh, vertex representation um, with convolutions, also even with um, transformers, new papers are based on this. But however, these methods are a little bit slow. Um, so that is why I uh, didn't use them in my uh, paper. However, of course, it uh, can be used uh, for generating vertex representation too. Uh, okay. Well, maybe you have any questions? No questions, okay. But uh, um, now uh, the next, uh, thank you for your efforts. Uh, the next report uh, should be uh, uh, sent uh, Alexander uh, five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, 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 Okay, uh, uh, next report not present because uh, uh, one of uh, the uh, one of the authors is so busy, but I'd like to say that uh, the next uh, report, uh, the first answer is Alexander Dudkin. Unfortunately, he did one years ago, and uh, of course, uh, he honored. Uh, him because uh, he uh, owed uh, us uh, all the organization of this conference and doing for our conference uh, many, many different uh, fields. And so it is very important for us and we remember it. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention. And now I close these uh, pages. And, uh, uh, continue uh, the going to the next reports and uh, uh, next reports is Svetlana uh, Ignatieva, Richard Bokos, person uh, identification using a uh, compound uh, descriptor and uh, invisible uh, region replacement. Uh, Svetlana, are you ready? Uh, you can start. 
Monique Metro, are you ready? Okay. Uh, please start your presentation and we uh, can continue yes, our session. Там такая кнопочка со стрелочкой внизу, которая показывает ваш экран. Uh, please start. <coughs> Hello, my name is Svetlana Ignatieva and I'm present person doing identification using compound descriptor in and invisible regions replacement. Person identification is a task of person determined uh, their presence in different places over a certain time interval in specially distributed video surveillance systems. In slide, you can see general scheme person identification system with a sequence from several CCTV cameras are divided into frames. On each frame, persons are detected and bound in box are format. Features are extracted from the query image uh, compared with the feature of images from gallery and uh, as a system output, we have the re-identification result. During the re-identification, one has to face such problems as camera view angle. Uh, depending on the position in relation on the camera, the object will look uh, completely different. Poses variable, a person can take on very large number of different positions in space. Lighting, uh, the color perception is highly dependent on the lighting degree at different day times under different weather condition in the typical uh, lighting presence. Resolution. Uh, different CCTV cameras uh, may differ in the preserved frame quality. Background clutters. Uh, Identification task is often uh, accompanied by a complex background presence. Appearance. People can be dressed the same or very similar for different reasons. People can change their appearance when uh, they move. Domain shift. This problem is due to the fact that video cameras can have dissimilar resolutions, uh, shooting at different times, uh, different degree of illumination, uh, camera position give different backgrounds. This is of great importance when working with dataset because each of them is a separate domain. Occlusions. Person is a video are moving and can often uh, be obscured by other people or landscape elements. Uh, and the detector errors cases when up detecting person part is crop. Uh, we propose algorithm that aims to reduce the impact of the last two problems on the accuracy of identification. For that, we use a compound descriptor for a human body and replace the feature on the missing image fragment with the average value for the k nearest neighbors. The algorithm requires the following steps. Uh, first, the detection 17 k points of human figure uh, in the image, formation of local areas, top, middle, and bottom figure, uh, parts based on the coordinates of k points, uh, making a decision in how the local area visibility uh, depending on the key points uh, predicted coordinates mm, compound descriptor formation consisting of four components a global feature vector for the entire image three local feature vectors for each area selected in the preview step if one or more local areas uh, are overlapping by other object then the corresponding components of the composed descriptor is invalid and equal to zero Information of the feature vector table for all image gallery, ranking the table according to the degree of similarity to the image descriptor of the desired person without talking about account the invalid components of the composed feature vector, replacing invalid components with key nearest neighbor average and rerun the feature table for the updates descriptor. Uh, Compound descriptor include global feature vectors for all image and three local feature vectors for top, middle, and bottom part, part uh, human silhouette. 17 can points are used to highlight uh, local areas and determine their visibility. Based on the key points coordinates, uh, the location of interesting regions and their visibility are determined. 
according to a number of coordinates listed on the slide. An example is also show for for people, the first person does not contain occlusion. The second head. Um, the second has uh, no head as a detector error result. The third has his set uh, hidden and the fourth has not visible legs. The corresponding local areas based on the result of visible key points and it is uh, are recognized is uh, visible or and equal to zero at the CNN train stage. When trained as CNN, a mask uh, consisting of zeros and honors uh, is formed for each local area, which allows you to select the required image region, after which uh, image uh, bytes are generated and loaded to input uh, CNN. Uh, when trained, uh, we use data augmentation and in which some images include a vertically and horizontally cyclic shift transformed to grayscale and some batch, batches are formed by addition small copies of some image to other. Depending on whether augmentation was applied to the data batch or not, the last function is calculated differently. Uh, at the slide top, you can see the last function without augmentation, at the bottom with augmentation. When calculating the last function uh, for an augmented batch for global descriptor components, is calculated taking into account the fact that uh, there are two people in the image and two additional lambda coefficients in introduced, depending on the error rate, uh, ratio of the original image and the small copy. Last functions valid for the batch are uh, Accumulated and average last function is calculated based on which the weight are changed. At the same time, the change rate of hidden layers is less uh, than for the classification layer. At CNN output, we get a uh, compound descriptor. After training, the CNN is used in the proposed identification algorithm. The algorithm requires the following steps extraction compound descriptor for each visible region of interest, finding car nearest neighbor for real components, determination of uh, K1 best neighbors that is very closest for the majority of components are determined, replacing invisible component with car one um, nearest neighbors average and uh, feature table ranking for update descriptor. <coughs> K and K1 nearest neighbors were determined experimentally and as can be seen eight and K1 equal to two. The slide also present heat maps uh, obtained based on the feature of the ResNet 15 CNN from the third and fourth level. Heat maps examples uh, that all of you to visible which image area has a greater influence on decision, decision than network. It can be seen from features that more local features are distinguished after ResNet 15 sort level than after force. So in top Hitman, CNN identifies several local areas which are characterized by the person feature. <coughs> the these areas are the head, shadows, hips, and uh, feet. While after the first net level down image, only one part is uh, distinguished and as can be seen in the feature. The four we ended classification layer after third level uh, while using convolution layers number, but increasing the identification accuracy. The effectiveness has also been uh, confirmed experimentally. Uh, in total, uh, four experimental series were carried out for four data Okay, I see that uh, Sakana have uh, some troubles uh, because he uh, shared uh, this in our session. Maybe he have uh, some problem with connection. 
Uh, but of course, we can think about uh, questions and uh, I invite the minutes maybe. Okay, here yeah, present now, but uh, maybe for increase our time, I propose uh, going uh, to the next report. Uh, the next report is uh, Akim Sergeyev, uh, Alexander Sawani, Vich, and Vladimir Malugin, Muti, uh, Cardioanalysis of COVID-19 uh, with uh, technology using machine learning. Uh, Akim, are you present here? Uh, welcome everyone. So um, okay, Akim, you show uh, show share your screen, but share for full presentation. First of all, start your presentation. After it, share uh, your uh, screen to your presentation. Okay. Um. Share. Это такая кнопочка со стрелом. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, can can you see uh, the presentation? Oh, yes, please. Oh. Um. <laughs> Okay, just moving the button. Okay, you can start. Let's start. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> I I uh, welcome uh, the participant uh, of this conference, uh, <clears throat> uh, and we uh, uh, in our paper we uh, discuss about multi-country analysis of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, typology using machine learning and neural network algorithm. Uh, so. <clears throat> uh, the land uh, of the problem is uh, uh, the problem of analysis uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is various aspect uh, is given uh, a con a considerable attention in the world scientific uh, literature an important direction uh, in the ongoing research in the development of method of for statistical analysis of the COVID-19 pandemic based uh, on the data available in the uh, mode of regular updating. Both uh, similar simulation and uh, statistical models are used uh, to uh, analyze and, and uh, short term predict the epidemic process and, at the level of individual countries. Uh, <clears throat> considerable attention in, uh, is paid to the task of analysis of the COVID 19 pandemic and in the multi country aspect. Uh, so previously, uh, in the following main problem, we are solved uh, developing uh, of statistical methods for, classif uh, for classifying countries <clears throat> by the uh, anxiety of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic based on the uh, available unclassified sample uh, started from the first pandemic uh, wave and the uh, construction of statistical indication uh, characterizing uh, the uh, intensity of the pandemic uh, at the country and multi-country levels. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, uh, what a uh, problem statement? Uh, uh, we have uh, we have data that um, uh, represents as a, a panel uh, panel data. Uh, so. Uh, it, it's a very similar it, 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 it can be represent like a many dimensional um, time series uh, so in the context of uh, covid 19 all these panel data have a, a, heter a heterogeneous cluster structure uh, it is uh, supported that the most important factors of uh, heterogeneity is the difference uh, between countries by a latent future with clusterized uh, with uh, characterized as the <clears throat> intensity of the covid 90 uh, epidemic process um, so all all our research was uh, <clears throat> was start with uh, uh, institute uh, uh, of uh, John Hopkins, uh, but recently his data has stopped uh, being updated uh, for many countries. Uh, so <clears throat> we 
uh, we chose uh, gold metal like uh, alternative. <clears throat> uh, so our our uh, 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 our uh, solve of this problem is uh, divide uh, the sample uh, heter heterogeneous in terms of latency feature into uh, some uh, classes, and after that. Uh, and train the model to classify uh, that clusters. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we we take uh, a lot of countries, around uh, 30 of uh, European regions, uh, and for European regions uh, like Romania, Australia, Azerbaijan, etc., we have uh, some uh, features like uh, total number of uh, infections, uh, number of active cases on f uh, infection, number of recovered, and number of deaths. Uh, so after that, uh, after parsing, and uh, uh, we should aggregate our features, and we um, <clears throat> we craft uh, four features like uh, close to total, close to active, and daily infections rate and death rate. Uh, and uh, based on these features, uh, we um, uh, we will uh, uh, we will uh, train uh, some models. Uh, so there are uh, some uh, pictures of uh, uh, COVID uh, dynamic. So it's um, <clears throat> uh, it's uh, uh, as as we can see, uh, there is total and active uh, cases uh, have very uh, high. So um, and. Uh, in many uh, in many local countries like um, Belarus, Russia, and UK, we uh, uh, we, we can see a very high level of uh, active uh, COVID nineteen epidemic. <clears throat> so uh, we uh, uh, what algorithm we used? Uh, first thing first, we used uh, comins and uh, hierarchical uh, clustering uh, for uh, make uh, make clusterization and uh, divide the data into three um, uh, clusters um, uh, for uh, for estimate uh, the level of uh, dangerous uh, for countries um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, after after that we. Uh, we sh we should uh, have some uh, metrics uh, to uh, uh, to uh, uh, approximate uh, the level. So one of the metrics is average country rating, and the uh, second one uh, is uh, integral uh, multi-country indicators uh, of COVID-19 at the time. Uh, <clears throat> after uh, clusterization, we have. Um, um, uh, we have uh, <clears throat> uh, okay, yeah. Um, I, in the figure, uh, we we can uh, see that uh, level of uh, average uh, ACR country um, uh, 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 was different for many countries, and uh, based on on that information. Um, uh, we we divide uh, every rating uh, for each uh, uh, epidemic uh, intensity based on its uh, like low, average, and high level. <clears throat> mm. uh, so and uh, uh, as we can see, uh, figure eight shows cycle wave changes in uh, integral multi-country indicators for the region under. Uh, Consideration. Uh, we can uh, uh, this, uh, design uh, for completed weights of, of the pandemic, which uh, correspond uh, to the wave cycles uh, of the real epidemic process. And uh, as we can see in clustering results, uh, we have uh, three uh, clusters uh, uh, that uh, as it can be. Uh, as it can be recognized, and as we can see, there is uh, not crossing uh, result. Uh, so uh, we uh, uh, it it uh, it can be a trained model uh, to uh, predict uh, clusters. And uh, the next <coughs> as the next part of uh, uh, 
this paper uh, would uh, uh, represent uh, Alexander. So. Yeah. Um, well, the next part of our research was uh, building a model to predict uh, the pandemic's level. So, as Akim said in the previous parts, uh, we've made uh, clustering analysis. So, after it, we uh, got features that can be fed to the model and uh, the predictions uh, can be made. Um, in our research, we used um, uh, K-fold um, cross-validation strategy uh, to uh, test our um, predictions. Um, in this uh, approach, uh, we divide the data into k folds. The default number is five, and uh, uh, each uh, uh, each time, uh, each iteration, we use uh, k minus one folds for training and uh, the case fold for <laughs> testing. The, um, the total result in the end is calculated uh, via the average uh, of all faults. Next slide, please. Um, in this table, you can see uh, the models that have been tried um, uh, in uh, classical uh, machine learning algorithms uh, parts. So the main model in our search was uh, sport vector machines, uh, as it's uh, listed in the first row. Um, besides it, we also tried uh, Begin classifier, extra trees classifier, kind neighbors classifier, Decision tree classifier and LGBM classifier. And uh, the results uh, of a matrix uh, are presented uh, in the table. And also the time uh, of um, modal training is also present presented in the uh, last column uh, of the table. Um, from these results, we can see that support vector machines uh, uh, is uh, the best model for our problem because it shows uh, the best uh, metrics. Uh, now, despite the um, uh, big time taken, almost uh, 20 times higher than the second place. Uh, that's why uh, uh, we have chosen this model as uh, the best and uh, uh, via support vector machine, uh, we can um, make predictions uh, of the future parts of the pandemic. The next step of our research was uh, also neural networks uh, experiments. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, we've tried three models. Uh, the basic one, uh, the more advanced one with uh, three hidden layers, and uh, the most advanced one with uh, dropout and uh, batch norm layers. Uh, and the results um, of the best model with dropout and batch norm uh, 1D layers is present in the table three. Uh, each row uh, represents each class of the, uh, our training and test data. And uh, as we can see from the table, uh, we got the model that performs um, almost two times better than random guessing because uh, uh, if we randomly choose the class for the uh, training sample and testing sample, uh, we got the probability of um, uh, 0 0.33 and our model shows uh, 0 0.67, 0 0.64 and 0 0.63 uh, for um, the third class. Um, Next slide, please. Uh, in conclusion, we can say that uh, in this research, we um, uh, managed to build uh, models, uh, both in classical machine learning algorithms and neural networks uh, that can be used to predict the pandemic uh, in uh, the future periods uh, by collecting data. Uh, processing data, making uh, such features as uh, uh, was presented by Kim, and uh, making some uh, classifications uh, using our models. 
that can help the government to control the level of the pandemic in the country. And uh, if they see some changes from their statistics, they can uh, uh, make uh, some other actions uh, to prevent the spreading of the pandemic. Uh, so probably that's it. And thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you for the report. Uh, maybe anybody have questions? Okay, maybe annoying something? Well, but um, uh, I have uh, two questions. The first question is when I look to your presentation in the slide. Uh, 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 can you show shot? Can you show it again? Thank you. Enough this one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I am. This, this, okay, the last slide, okay. Uh, when I look into this chart, I see that uh, uh, two different types. Uh, there is a strange type for me because it is 20, 22, 20, 21. But uh, we have uh, almost a simple uh, a line. Uh, why we can see uh, such line? It is uh, any normal that coefficient and uh, what, what does it mean? Uh, what is the difference between uh, red and blue line in uh, mathematical intelligence? I mean. So, what uh, is uh, Alexander, can you help me with uh, on this slide? Yeah, sure. Uh, as we can see, um, uh, the blue line and red line almost uh, coincide. So this states that the trends of the pandemic in um, uh, 2020 till 2021 and 2020 till uh, 2022 uh, are almost the same. And uh, that states that we can um, build the model that can predict this trend uh, also in the future. But why do you have, why do you have uh, such predictions? Because it's uh, a uh, different date, as I understand, uh, but uh, it should be more. Um, sorry, can you repeat, please? Uh, I don't understand uh, why we have uh, similar lines. Because if uh, I look for date, date uh, we, have, we have difference in date in two time, but mm -hmm. for line I see the same line. Because yeah. Any uh, normalization and what? Uh, actually, uh, I think the line is in this graphic is like a misunderstanding because uh, each point on this uh, plot um, uh, states the pandemic uh, class or cluster for each country. As you can see uh, in the bottom, uh, there are countries and uh, in the uh, Y uh, axis, uh, there is a cluster and uh, it states that uh, the, uh, during two periods, A and, and B, uh, the classes uh, or clusters of the countries almost coincide. Well, but, uh, okay, but for next slide, it's 15. No. Mm -hmm. uh, 15. Okay, this, uh, uh, you talked about three clusters. Mm -hmm. uh, when you divide it for three clusters, but I don't understand uh, what this means, three clusters, what sense of three clusters. Uh, okay. Uh, 
the idea of three clusters states that uh, data is separable. Uh, so as we can see in this plot, uh, there, there are three lines and uh, they are almost separable. So that means that uh, classes uh, do not intersect each other and uh, can be uh, separated uh, by the model. Oh, well, thank you for your... Maybe do we have any questions else? Uh, please uh, close your presentation. Uh, maybe you have any uh, questions? No questions? Okay. If you know questions, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> And we continue our session, and I uh, like to ask uh, Svetlana Ignatieva, maybe uh, we continue uh, your presentation. Svetlana, are you ready? Thanks. Yes. Скажите, на каком слайде я остановилась? Там у вас была отдельная Вот это? Yes. Да, yes. Uh, we, uh, <coughs> we make four experimental series. We are carried out for four that set market uh, 1501, uh, UCOM TMC, MSMT, and Paul Reid. Mm. And uh, uh, the first experimental for identification, we used baseline and ResNet uh, 15 uh, in a standard configuration without pre-train on ImageNet. Uh, two experiments based on the proposed algorithm and the stripped down version of ResNet uh, 15 without um, pre-train. Uh, Third experiment for identification as a proposed algorithm with, uh, was used using a compound descriptor basement on invisible fragment and stripped down version of ResNet 15 without train. Uh, during train, uh, two stage training technology was used in which augmentation was applied during the first uh, 45 uh, train epoch. And uh, for experiment, uh, an approach similar to the previous uh, one was used, but ResNet 15 is pre-trained on ImageNet. Uh, the experimental results show uh, that the use of the proposed algorithm for personal identification from ImageNet makes it possible to increase the accuracy relative to the baseline in the rank one metric uh, by um, 12% and uh, by uh, 36% for the market data set. For Duke data set, the accuracy increased by 17 and uh, 60, uh, 36% uh, in rank and map, map metrics, respectively. Uh, for MSMT, the accuracy increased for rank one by uh, 51%, map by uh, 97%. And uh, for Paul Ray database, uh, have also become better for run by uh, eight person and map by uh, twenty uh, uh, eight person. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you Simona. but. Uh... Uh, maybe uh, anybody has questions for this method because uh, I understand that this uh, complicated thinking about uh, cut and reference when we start uh, uh, 10 minutes ago and return again. But uh, yeah, maybe anybody has questions? No, if you have any questions, uh, I'd like to ask about the definition region of persons. I don't understand what what it means with this uh, under this uh, terms region because uh, when uh, you uh, spend identification of uh, 
different person. You talked about skeleton of uh, moving uh, like us, body, arms, legs, and something, etc. But uh, after it, you talked about region. What does it mean region? Можно по-русски ответить? А, ну, мы берем регионы, а не сам скелетон. Ну, Во-первых, как бы брать все 17 точек, это будет очень много компонентов у вектора признаков, что будет требовать больших вычислительных затрат. Мы пробовали брать разное количество вот этих вот регионов, и наиболее эффективными оказались вот эти три. Поэтому мы их оставили. Ну, да. Тогда на этом закройте шарик в вашей презентации, мы потом. Окей. Any questions? No questions. And uh, thank you, Ivana. Спасибо. And we're going to the next report. It is Alexander Sata. Hello everyone, my presentation is about outlier filter filtering in a sample. Uh, in this work, we consider the problem of filtering outliers in a sample. A genetic algorithm for outliers filtering was proposed, and its performance was tested in a linear regression problem on synthetic and real data. In machine learning uh, and other areas of applied mathematics, it often becomes necessary to build uh, a model based on a sample. Uh, usually, samples have outliers, uh, measurement results that stand out from the total sample. Uh, on the left part of slide, you can see an example of outliers in classification problem. On the right uh, are the outliers in the regression problem. Uh, at first, uh, why outliers are problem? Uh, let's consider two examples. Mm, uh, first one is log loss. Log loss is loss file function is often used in classification tasks. Here, uh, if we confidently make a mistake on outlier, the loss can be up to infinity. In practice, it's reasonable uh, to limit loss uh, to one object with some big value, but it's still a problem. Second example is other boost algorithm. In, in other boost, uh, objects weights with uh, errors in class labels can exponentially increase on each step. In this way, and soon other boost algorithm will learn almost on outliers. Uh, of course, uh, there exist uh, methods of outlier filtering. For example, uh, the simplest approach is just to drop some part of objects with the bigger error. Also, uh, it's possible to use uh, other boost mentioned uh, on previous slide. In this approach, several steps uh, of uh, learning are made and objects with two big ways are removed. In this work, we propose uh, to use genetic algorithm for filter outliers. The main idea is to drop a part of objects from trained sample in such a way that a fitted model performance on pollination sample will be maximized. It's important to remove objects from one sample part to maximize performance on another sample part. Uh, the model performance is uh, checked on the training sample after evolution process. On the right, you can see experiment decision design. Uh, one of the most important parts of genetic uh, algorithm is fit fitness function. In our problem, fitness function was a sum of mean squared error uh, and penalty uh, for excluding part of objects. We tried to use a uh, robust penalty for excluding object, but it was a bad idea. Uh, on the left, uh, you can see histogram of quality increasing on synthetic data. Uh, this data is a simple linear function with uh, normally distributed, uh, distributed random noise effect. 
uh, on the right, you can see such a histogram for real world data. Uh, we use the Boston Housing data set here. Uh, it is one of the most uh, famous uh, simple data sets for regression problem. Uh, in both cases, proposed outliers filtering uh, increase model quality. Bigger effect was observed uh, on the real data. Uh, it is possible to improve proposed approach in different ways. Uh, first uh, option is result caching. The evolution process will twice faster with result caching. Another way uh, is to change generation of initial population. For example, we can use any heuristic uh, approach for this and improve a little bit uh, heuristic result instead of building solution from the very beginning. The next option is uh, to optimize epoch, epoch count. Also, it's possible to change population size or other constants. Thank you for your attention. Um, okay, thank you for your effort, short effort. And, uh, of course, uh, this uh, problem, proper problem of uh, filtering of data, because uh, when we start any uh, teaching of uh, machine learning algorithm or something like this, uh, we have usually uh, many uh, problems with uh, noise, with uh, false objects, with something like this. And uh, uh, these methods allow to us uh, use it uh, for filtering of data. And for my opinion, it's important and uh, maybe very uh, Thank you. Uh, maybe anybody uh, have a question? Alexander, you can uh, close your screen. This chart, okay, thank you. And we continue. The next report is uh, Gaulian. Gaulian. You go here. Yes, uh, model identification of what. And uh, told me if it's necessary to uh, make the show next slide, okay? Awesome. Uh, I use uh, I use uh, MATLAB BP narrow uh, BP narrow uh, can make use uh, and the model three and striking. And here we can use that the support of model uh, to inspect uh, the and the result of training fiction. Expression is uh, a diff uh, different people. It's and the, uh, the mean to the to the obtain the uh, confidence in the different model different uh, by the origin and the max fiction is used you know, in our method the platform uh vibration fitting on the model and uh, the minimum number of the integration is uh, six to fifteen. Uh, <coughs> and uh, 
the outer of the two and the other uh, arm model is used uh, is shown in the picture below. Okay. <coughs> Uh, we are the flow train uh, is the output of the arm model and the free entry is the actual uh, entry and uh, antenna equipment that is and uh, it can be seen that the data is uh, the interpret warranty used here in the list of ways uh, we use the uh, Intervention can reach people and the chief The film compares the research of the implementation via vision and narrow network of the extreme. Mental depth between temperature and the geometry and the mystery contain is uh, shown in the picture one in the picture two. The blood uh, is can be seen that the uh, premium stream uh, are put that uh, give a crease of 10 feet. With family uh, meet the requirements of uh, uh, in places and the uh, potential model. At the potential of the metric canteen and the uh, green speed of the water is the important bit of the intrinsic water drain process and the important means to the improvement of water. Land vision and quickly. Uh, this article varies on the people of the world, the young control, through real vision, similar vision, and analysis and uh, experimental can, uh, conference, very, uh, very main claimant and the follow aggregator of work. It can be seen from the model that the arm model has uh, a high degree of the agreement with temperature in the mixture and can give the represent the degree of the uh, low network of temperature in temporary and the uh, material content and can flow with the uh, requirements of the Control model and uh, the composition of the arm model in and the uh, uh, EPN uh, narrow network and uh, from uh, a good switch control model and uh, we can raise a physical base of this for the application of the uh, arm model in the EP narrow network in the uh, speech. Okay. okay, thank you for your attention. Let's go for your efforts. Uh, uh, maybe any questions? More questions? Thank you. Uh, uh, but uh, now we finish our section. It's more section. And uh, my proposition uh, uh, now going to the close uh, ceremony. Uh, I see uh, online uh, present uh, many interesting people, and uh, for example, uh, one of uh, persons from our local committee, uh, for example, Alexei Bionsarkovsky. Also, I see that present uh, uh, people from Israel. It's Professor Zihad Elsana, uh, who is uh, give reports to us. And uh, I uh, also in uh, our auditorium present uh, a few people of. Uh, uh, sorry, of. Uh, no, 
просто поблизости стал, чтобы так рассказать. Это все локал комитеты, вы видите, академишн Бомик Сергей и также из локал комитета Виктор Казатьёна. First of all, uh, my proposition switch of camera because <laughs> for uh, our closing ceremony, ceremony we very visible uh, for uh, people that present in our uh, conferences. And uh, I'd like to say that uh, it is, uh, we organize interesting conference and we uh, collect uh, many records. Uh, uh, for us, we take about 100 articles, and uh, on after reviewing, uh, we use only 72 uh, reports, uh, articles for publication of proceeding materials. Proceeding materials now uh, published in the site of our conference, it is the third bottom of my uh, orange color. As far as I remember. Uh, but, uh, but now some people going to us. It's uh, Professor. Uh, uh, it is uh, Professor Mister Krasnoprosian. Uh, he also very old member of uh, our conference. Vice Chairman, yes, <laughs> organization. And uh, I continue. And uh, we, uh, in our proceedings uh, materials, we published about 72 uh, articles, but uh, for our section, we uh, listened uh, about uh, 69 uh, reports. As a result, it's very uh, good statistics for our conference because uh, we uh, have uh, very good support from our author. And of course, I would like to uh, uh, say uh, thanks for everybody. And also, a special uh, thanks for our local committee, for uh, uh, people that support us. Um, maybe now uh, I would like to uh, uh, give a few words for uh, Vice Chairman Sergei uh, Vladimirovich. Good afternoon. Of course, it's a great pleasure to be here. We have a nice conference. It's not easy conditions when there are travels for traveling, for everything. Anyway, we had uh, almost 100% uh, of presentations due to hybrid mode of the conference. Uh, some, most of the people were present here, some of them made by online, and it's really, very good that we organized this conference. And of course, uh, our great thanks uh, to conference organizers, uh, chairman of pre-16 uh, conferences, of course, State University Faculty of Life Mathematics and Computer Science. And uh, I would like to wish all of uh, us uh, new results in the future and of course to meet you in the next 17th uh, Patrick Mission Information Processing Conference. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe uh, the next question. Yes, but the uh, next one. So okay, okay, okay. I would like to tell everybody that our conference is more important than uh, East Europe. And, uh, unfortunately, now we have a very big tribulation in our society, but, but, by the way, we Organized in uh, this conference, there are people arrived from different countries, uh, not directly but uh, online. And that is why 
in principle, our consensus uh, has success. That's why I uh, propose that our scientific society improve our communication and we try to organize such type of projects everywhere. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, now I propose to uh, say a few words uh, on Sergei Lonsorkovsky, who is uh, uh, our best moderator and best uh, uh, our media. Uh, yes, not only technical, it's media, but stream was uh, uh, presenter because it is designed, it is many, many, many deals. Well, thank you. So, do you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that, these are two words actually, so two, two, two sentences all, all, all of these three years. Do you hear me now and do you see my screen? So I hope that uh, probably in the next next uh, conference it will be not so often uh, which we need to, to, to say these words. So do you hear me now or do you see my screen? So because what we all of us think and what all of us hope to do is uh, is to, to to meet again in, in reality so last time i mean in 2021 um i put this uh this uh, this sentence on the on the last slide so to see you in reality well okay so now you see that really hybrid uh, event hybrid session i mean closing session that you're very few in in, in real well a closing ceremony but uh it means that Actually, so we are live and we're in digit. And as I said, if you're not in internet, if you're not in digit, it means you're not exist anyway. Uh, so it means that um, I think that uh, the conference is, uh, was quite successful, as Chairman said that we have around 100 uh, of papers and uh, well, a little bit less participants, but still. So it was alive and it was on YouTube. And all of you, uh, all of us, showed quite good, impressive results. And in now it is in memories. And in the future, I hope uh, that uh, we will be also in trend as now. And of course, uh, to see you, it's very well honor for me, very big honor for for all of us, for all of those who are in online or not offline. And uh, so um, I hope that. I just want to wish you all of our, all of us uh, be health, uh, so uh, be strong, and do science uh, as well as best as as bad as we as we can. So that's what 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 I can say now. So uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but uh, of course I'd like. Uh give a few words because for our guests, for, for our country, uh, for, uh, if it's possible, uh, uh, Professor Zihad uh, 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 El Sana, maybe you say for us a few words because we your first uh, time in our conference and very interesting listen your opinion what uh, we have uh, goods, what we have uh, not goods. Uh, okay. so, so, so maybe you say a few words what? Uh, no, 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 no. no? <laughs> okay. Maybe if uh, we haven't, uh, uh, maybe anybody else might say some words. Okay, okay, okay. I don't, I don't know if it's a fake thing. I won't notice a very good uh, management of all sessions, and I want to say uh, thank you very much for this conference. And uh, I believe that all. Participants uh, join me, my voice. Thank you very much. Okay, but now if we have a unfortunately we can I'm very hopeful that uh, we continue our uh, our conference uh, after we 
few years. And uh, our confidence uh, will be provided after a few years. And uh, I'm sure uh, that uh, we have a good level and we can continue to our publication, the stage, and something like this. And also, uh, we can use this conference for communication between us because it's uh, so important, so important to know uh, that uh, we can communicate with different countries, we can communicate together. It's very, very important. And uh, this uh, conference allows to us to uh, increase this communication. And you, you, you see that. Uh, our experience is a uh, complete uh, confidence that we use online and offline together. Uh, it, uh, um, it, uh, it will be very, very important for us and it is great for us new possibilities, new, uh, new experience. Yes. New communication. Communication, yes. Um, Maybe, maybe we uh, try uh, create something uh, uh, during the conference. Uh, we discussed with uh, uh, some professors about uh, organization of streams. Uh, maybe we create the streams on base uh, this uh, conference and uh, under uh, title of this conference, maybe. But uh, I'm sure that. Uh, we can see you. We can continue. Yes, we can see you two years. We can keep our own We can keep our own We have a channel in the Telegram channel. We said if we can write a different message, different events, we can post a different events. We should prepare it. Yeah. Yes. Maybe about this uh, Telegram uh, channel, say Alexei, if you was Alexei, because he moderator of uh, this. Uh, but uh, this uh, channel starts from 2021. Yes, we, we will see what to do actually. So probably we will uh, we will um, launch another channel. Uh, which will be just without any any numbers, just uh, prep, partner recognition, information processing. But currently, of course, all of you are welcome uh, to uh, well to join this channel and to uh, well to say some words there for for for, for current uh, conference uh, wishes for for the new one, which will I hope will be uh, in two years. Well, and of course, uh, all of all of the session, at least uh, more than half of sessions, we already succeed to, to, to record on, on YouTube. Of course, it's, uh, it will be open. And our site, which is also a brand, prep.by. So all of uh, all of what, what we have will be on the site, including proceedings and programs and so on. So, so we are online, as I said. Okay, we are uh, every time online and we are very uh, happy uh, for new friendship and new friends. Uh, welcome. But now I finish our conference. Close, close our conference. Thank you all for our support, our effort, our help. I'm very glad to see you.